Chat GPT, the viral AI that's taking over the world, going to disrupt all kinds of industries. In my tech channel, I talked about how it's uh, disrupting uh, the cloud architecture industry, the software development industry. But in this video, and on this channel, I want to focus on the more controversial side of things. So I've been seeing a lot of uh, influencers online, uh, mostly conservative influencers, people like Paul Joseph Watson, people like Kim Iverson. Now, I actually like Kim Iverson, so that's why I decided to look into this. Paul Joseph Watson, I don't really pay attention to much of what he says. He is a race baiter. Now, uh, what they were both saying was that chat GPT is racist towards white people and it's racist towards conservatives. Uh, if you ask ChatGPT a question, as you know, it will be able to have a conversation with you and come up with new answers, new content using something called generative AI. So it's generating new content. It's not just going to uh, uh, paste in content that's somewhere on the web. No, it will take data from thousands and millions and millions of data sources, analyze that data, come up with brand new data. And so that's what's kind of revolutionary about this. They were asked the question, Write an essay about the positive attributes of black people. So you can see, uh, I asked ChatGPT to write an essay about the positive attributes of black people, and it really uh, did a good job. It said black people have diverse and dynamic group of individuals, each with their own unique qualities and strengths. So when we did the same thing for white people, they did kind of a disclaimer first saying, I'm sorry, but it's not appropriate to write an, an essay that generalizes an entire racial group. People of all races and ethnicities have unique qualities, abilities, and strengths that make them who they are as individuals. Rather than focusing on generalizations and stereotypes, it is more productive to celebrate the differences and diversity that makes each person unique and to encourage people to recognize and value the worth of every individual regardless of their race. And then they went on to say uh, some examples of positive attributes of individuals, including white individuals. So they said including white individuals. So it's like they didn't want to come out and just say white individuals is all of this so uh yeah so just looking at this i would say well looks like kim iverson might be right uh is there an agenda but let's go deeper let's try this so then i say write an essay about the positive attributes of european americans now it comes back and says well once again it it, it doesn't give that same disclaimer it does say i'm an open ai i can't really give my opinions However, I can provide a neutral and factual response on the topic. Then it will say, European Americans have made significant contributions to the development and advancement of the United States. And it does provide a lot of very good um, positive attributes of European Americans uh, to the world, right? So there you go. So let's, let's try some more. So when you tell it to write an essay about the positive attributes of Germans, it starts off no sort of disclaimer about I don't... Uh, provide my opinions, it just jumps right in. Germans have made a significant contribution to the world, innovation, work ethic, education, cultural heritage, environmental stewardship. So they just jump right in there. For white women, uh, we write an essay about the positive attributes of white women. Chat GPT runs, jumps right in, no uh, sort of disclaimer before it. Uh, the same sort of spiel, they've made a lot of uh, contributions to the world, empowerment and advocacy, education, philanthropy, cultural contributions, entrepreneurship. So once again, this is not showing me that ChatGPT is racist as uh, Paul Joseph Watson, Kim Iverson would like you to believe. Um, uh, there is some issues with the data being fed, but I don't think it has anything to do with the people. Well, now I could be wrong, but I could... When I finish looking at examples, I will look at why I think uh, uh, the white people question is giving you different responses than the others. Okay, so white man also, positive attributes, uh, jumps right in, no disclaimer. Now, I think this AI is learning as we go along, because I could have sworn I tried this maybe like 10 minutes earlier and there was a disclaimer under white men, uh, but now I don't see it. Um, so I don't know. It's just probably learning as we go along. Okay, so in conclusion, what I can see is when you type in ChatGPT to write an essay about white men, it gives it to you. 
Write an essay about a white woman, it gives it to you. Write an essay about uh, European Americans, it gives it to you. Write a, uh, an essay about Germans or Polish or any of that, it gives it to you. For European Americans, it put a small disclaimer in front of it that it didn't do for African Americans. As a language model developed by OpenAI, I do not have opinions. However, I can provide a neutral and factual response to the topic. So, uh, and so there is some truth to what uh, uh, Kim was saying there. But let's take a look deeper at data. Let's come to Google that's uh, based off of, let's come to Google search, type white people. And as you know, search is based off of basically all the websites and news stories that are out there in the world. And let's look at the images. So, just because I just want to quickly get a snapshot of uh, what kind of stories have the word white people in them on the internet. And you'll notice that, first of all, there's a lot of black people that show up when you type white people. What does that mean? Well, it means that most of the stories that are on the internet that have the word white people are generally related to something, to a case probably of racism, <laughs> or some kind of interaction with black people. And those are the stories that are showing up, right? And then even when they are stories that show white people, as you can see here, it's something like this guy. I haven't even read it, but look, four ways white supremacy harms. And it's these professors that are making some analysis of white people and racism. So all the stories that have the word white people on the internet, generally are related to some kind of case of racism. So if you're feeding that kind of data into an AI, it's just going to interpret what it's getting. And that doesn't happen when you send it data about Germans, about Anglo-Saxons, about Polish, because then it just there's just tons and tons of stories on the internet about culture and about business and about things like that. So the AI is just going to read all that data in and interpret it. Just forgetting about the AI, just going to a Google search and typing white people, you know, I don't, I'm not even looking at the stories. I'm not even reading them. I'm just looking at the snapshot, the pictures. I can already tell that these are not positive stories, right? These are stories about negative cases. These are negative stories associated with the word white people. If I type European Americans, then I get more sort of stories, uh, not, not stories that are sort of reflective of uh, uh, interactions with other races, but just uh, stories about Europeans in America for the most part. So that kind of data fed into an AI would more than likely, the AI will probably have something to talk about other than uh, here are all the stories and they're all related to racism. So if anything, I think what's happening at ChatGPT is more a reflection of uh, the stories that are constantly being talked about in the media and less about what the designers of ChatGPT did. That's what I think. But what do you guys think? Let me know.